My name is Hans-Peter Fischer. I'm partner for cybersecurity at KPMG in Frankfurt. And I'd like to talk about artificial intelligence in cybersecurity. Um, if you look at the stands or look at software vendors, artificial intelligence is um, at the top of the marketing hype cycle. Every product gets a button on it. It's, it's artificial intelligence and sells for twice the price now. And um, you can get the feeling that it's uh, the silver bullet for all the security problems that the companies have. And uh, that's why I'd like to take a look uh, at it and what's, what's really in it. And uh, does it really help the companies that much? Um, I will take a simplified look, of course, because the time is very short. Um, what is artificial intelligence? Uh, there's a very open definition that says uh, it's some sort of program that imitates human behavior. And uh, if you define it like this, then yeah, every, every simple script that has an if clause in it is something like artificial intelligence. So uh, that's not really very interesting. So we look into um, a, a part of it. Um, Machine learning. What is machine learning? Machine learning is um, mostly associated with a, with a model that is made by humans with parameters. And then you have the, the machine looking at data and populating this model with the data that you, that you uh, give the machine to learn. So you have uh, about 2 to 5% of data that is available um, to get the first results for uh, machine learning. Obviously, this model is really dependent on how you define the, the base model. If the model is weak, then the conclusions from the AI are not very, very smart, of course. So if you look at another part, the deep learning, um, this is often associated with neural networks. Uh, there you have the intelligence set up the model itself. So you feed data in it, and it looks for, for valid parameters um, to, to make a decision. So um, you need a lot of data to make this happen. And of course, as much as machine learning depends on the model, deep learning depends on the data that you provide the AI to learn. So it's that you, you have to provide all the data that you got. And uh, if the data is not, not complete, then of course, um, within the deep learning, you have to do some, some manual corrections. For example, if you want to learn the AI uh, in, in geography, for example, and you provide only books from the Middle Ages, then the AI will conclude that the world is a disk and not a globe, of course. And this is what happened to um, uh, Watson, for example. Um, I think it was at the CBIT 2011 when... Um, there was an announcement that Watson was used for German hospitals to, to support the doctors in, uh, in treating their patients and getting the right medicine. This project, this cooperation, was canceled some days, some weeks ago. And why? Because the German doctors realized that the, the base data with which Watson was trained with is, um, is based on American hospitals, and that doesn't fit to German hospitals. For example, um, American doctors tend to prescribe expensive medication, while uh, German doctors, because of the cost pressure and, and all this stuff, tend to prescribe uh, the cheaper generic medication. What does it mean for security? Um, in security, it's um, quite hard to get a solid foundation of data for deep learning, because there are many things happening. Um, you don't really know what's re ha um, happening in your network and outside your network. And uh, there are a lot of new malicious activities in the network. And uh, you don't have only the uh, so-called um, known unknowns, but you have also unknown unknowns. And it's very hard uh, to feed the intelligence with, with data. Um, so uh, what will happen if you, if you try to, to do anomaly recognition in your network? Um, two also simplified examples. Um, if, you, if you have this program, it is uh, watching your network and it's learning for days, for weeks, maybe for months. 
and uh, at the end of the year, you have the year-end closing. And this is um, uh, a time where there are special processes. There are new applications used. People are accessing data that they haven't been accessing before. And um, this would be this, um, classified as an anomaly, because this has ha hasn't happened all the year before. So it would generate um, a false positive, probably. On the other hand, if uh, you have the learning phase and you have already a hacker in your network, this activity of the hacker is classified as legit legitimate. And uh, if you rely on the AI afterwards, uh, it won't alert the activities of the hacker because they are normal behavior. And maybe even if a second hacker uh, infiltrates your network, it won't also be uh, classified as, as critical, as an alert, because um, the AI has learned that this is normal behavior. So uh, you have to put some thought into it. Um, there are two basic risks in using AI in cybersecurity. First, um, you will have blind spots depending on, on your model and the data that you provide for learning. The second is you put up a black box. You, you can't really analyze why the AI is, is um, making this or that decision. So to, to be sure that the quality is high and the AI makes the right decisions, you need thorough testing and sampling. You have to uh, uh, throw something into it and see how it reacts, whether it is uh, on the right track. And um, what also is one of, the, one of the services that consulting companies like us are working on, pen testing of artificial intelligence, um, providing crafted data and have the AI learn something wrong so that it won't detect a real attack afterwards. So is it all bad? No, of course not. But um, we, have, we have three recommendations if you use AI in cybersecurity. First of all is um, don't buy snake oil. There are many products at the market um, now freshly with the AI sticker. Well, have a very deep look into it, whether it really helps your company. The second is don't underestimate the effort that is necessary to have the machine um, learning the specifics of, of your company. This will take a long time, and you will have a lot of false positives and false negatives until it really provides you with valuable information. And third is um, don't start too ambitious. We have very good experience with um, very clear and small use cases. For example, in, this, in the CM section, um, we had a, a machine learning setup to, to identify the root causes of false positives of the CM that worked very well. Because it was a clear rule set, and the machine was able uh, to look at a lot of data, and um, the efficiency of the CM really uh, went up. Another example is identity and access management, um, where you also usually have big amounts of data, and uh, the machine is able um, to, to build up some roles out of the, um, the rights that are in the systems. And uh, a third example is uh, identifying um, phishing mails. Um, this has also worked quite well in our experience. We're, we've done some projects with clients with that. So um, have your step into the world of AI. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, very present here at, at the fair, everywhere. Uh, have your first steps there, but be, be patient and be careful and have a clear scope of what you want to do. Thank you. Thank you.